Hi guys, I thought I would pop on and do another quick how-to video with these leaf stencils because if you know me, you know I just can't get enough of working with these. So um, these leaf stencils are from the Dina Weekly line. I think one is called Curly Fronds and this one I think is Tropical Leaves. Um, basically, I just recently was using some of my end papers. So I use papers while I'm working um, at my art desk and I kind of will swatch out colors or wipe off colors on this paper so I can use it later. And so I was thinking, wow, you know, it could be fun to do beautiful cutouts on those papers because you kind of can get the painterly marks on there um, with your brush. So basically, what I went ahead and, and did ahead of time is just use really wide brushes and two kind of colors. I would pick a dark color on the bottom and then brush uh, white on top, kind of when it was still wet, so you get some blending going on. But I just thought, wow, that looks so beautiful. And sometimes, you know, it looks funny, beautiful with even um, three colors. So, and then there's two ways um, that you can do this. So the first way is to use some paint on the underside. So if you want to get, I'm just going to tap out some paint here. If you want to get a more simple shape, kind of more like this, okay, then you can flip your paper over and pick a stencil of your choice. And I'm just using a Ranger mini blending tool and some Dina Weekly paint. You don't need, I mean, it doesn't even matter what color you use. And I'm just going around the edge of the stencil. You know, I don't, I don't have to do anything cool. Plus, okay, so that looks cool, just like that, right? But it's just a quick way um, to cut out your stencil. And I mean, I'm doing this with leaves this time around because I just like having botanical shapes to throw into my collages. But you can do this with any shape. You can do this with geometric shapes. You can do this with anything. And in fact, I've been working with geometrics as well and printing them from the underside or on the jelly plate. So when you cut it out, you already have this abstract shape. So it looks very cool like this, and this could look cool on a, like a light background. Um, you can doodle on this. So this is one version. And they look, you know, very, really nice together. This stencil in particular looks a bit like a feather when you cut it out. So, and I'll just make a pile of these and save them for later for collages. Plus sometimes the underside looks cool too. You know, I've been playing with these, so sometimes I might even save this and glue this down. So just thinking of different ways to use your supplies. And then another way to do this, which is fun, is to take a Sharpie, a uh, water-based paint marker, you can use Posca, you can really use anything. But I like this because it has a fat paint um, tip, so when you're using it, you're getting a very wide line. And again, you know, you can pick a, a part of the page that you like and then just trace around it in a nice, thick, bold line. And I I posted a video about this last week with craft paper and somehow I deleted it. I, I don't know how I did that, but I did. And again, you know, it doesn't have to look perfect. It can look messy because, you know, if you're doing mixed media art, it can be grungy. And you can always play with your cutting if you want to even out the thickness of your line a bit. You know, you can thin your line. Like here, it's a little blobby. So I can just go in a little bit more there. It doesn't really matter though. I don't, I don't really care. So now by outlining this shape, I have a bolder design. 
but I still have the painterly effects on the back. Getting this last bit is always a little tricky. There we go. Okay, so now I have this bold shape. And I could just leave it like that. Again, that looks kind of cool in a collage. You can use lots of bold colors in the background. I have another one here that I haven't cut out. But again, this also leaves room for doodling on your shape. So you've gotten started with the paints, but now you can come back in and you can add some details with your markers. Just another way to kind of add to your cutouts. So again, here I'm just using my end papers. This is literally just um, news newsprint paper. I have a huge roll and I'll roll it down on my desk and um, you know I just started doing that recently because again it's just allowing me to do double the work in half the time. So while I'm working in my art journals I'm you know playing around on my end papers. This is literally an a messy end paper and um, and then I can reuse that you know. So I'm kind of doing two things at once two, three things. That's how I like to work. <laughs> but anyway, I just thought it'd be another fun way for you to get some ideas on how to work with some of your stencils and art supplies for your art journals. So if you use any of these techniques, I love to see what people do. So please tag me. Um, because it gets me excited to see if people come up with fun new ways to play with some of these ideas. Thank you so much, everybody.